Hello there, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today for one of our Merck-focused webinars here at the Retirement Group. My name is Samantha, and I'm in Client Services here. I moderate these weekly webinars. Welcome. In just a minute, we're going to be joined by our advisor, Wesley Boudreaux, and he's going to be speaking to Merck employees about Roth conversions. Um, but before I bring Wesley on, I would like to very quickly remind you that although we have clients who are both active and retired members of Merck, we are not affiliated nor endorsed whatsoever by Merck. The Retirement Group is a completely independent group of financial advisors, so please keep that in mind. Uh, after Wesley's presentation, I will join him again very, very quickly to ask him any of the questions you may have entered into the Q&A chat throughout his presentation. Please feel free to ask away. It is completely anonymous, and he will get to as many questions as he can, time permitted. Uh, and with that, I'm going to now turn off my camera so that Wesley can get started on his presentation. Uh, hi, Wesley. All right. Thank you for that introduction, Samantha. And yeah, like she said, we're going to be talking about Roth conversions today or some different ways to actually fund a Roth as well. Uh, that question you see on the screen right there, when's the right time to convert to a Roth? Uh, really, it's going to be dependent upon each individual uh, circumstance and situation. But I like to tend to review with clients and prospects closer to the end of the year, maybe October, November, uh, if we're looking at doing Roth conversions, especially in retirement, because a lot of times we know most of the years behind us, there's less surprises and gotchas. Um, God forbid we you do a big conversion in January, then all of a sudden, let's say in August, uh, you know, down the south, maybe you get a hurricane or maybe there's something else, a natural disaster. Uh, you need to do a roof repair, something like that. And the only way to get it is to tap into your IRA or 401k. Now, you may have kicked yourself up into a higher tax bracket. So that's one reason why we like to wait uh, towards the end of year, end of the year for those uh, as well. So just get that out of the way. And we'll also focus on, uh, we'll go through this, talk about some different options and give you a quick refresh on who the retirement group is. But we have been working with Fortune 500 companies for over 30 years at this point. So first and foremost, uh, Roth conversions. So uh, first, uh, first off, a Roth conversion is going to be actually converting pre-tax money over into a Roth IRA. So that could be money you've set aside over the course of many years at a 401k, Maybe you've made uh, IRA contributions. Um, maybe you've uh, rolled over money from a 401k already and you say, hey, look, I know there's a ticking tax or there's a tax time bomb ticking. And I know I got to start taking the RMDs, required minimum distributions at some point. Uh, right now, it's pretty much 73 for a lot of people, uh, then pushing to age 75 uh, and about 10 years from now. Uh, so what's going to happen is uh, at that point in time, the IRS is going to come knock on the door and say, hey, you need to start taking distributions from your IRA or 401k so we can tax you on it. So a lot of times we want to focus on uh, minimizing taxes. We know what tax brackets are now. We have no idea what they're going to be in 10, 15, 20 years, but it's a safe assumption to think that uh, they may be higher than where they are now, given all the government spending we've seen the last couple of years, uh, definitely. So that's where we get into the aspect of, uh, of timing and whether or not a Roth conversion makes sense. And for every person, it's going to be an individual situation. We go through a lot of these every year. And in some cases, individuals who are in really low tax brackets where you think it might make sense, it actually doesn't make sense because now we're kicking up into having extra taxation on their Social Security, for instance. Uh, or it may be individuals that want to make big uh, conversions of $100,000, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars maybe. It, it may make sense, but they also have to factor in based upon their age if there's the um, you know higher Medicare premiums. We go through all those different things. So again, really, if you want to look at this, give us a call so we can dig into it in detail for you specifically. So we'll talk about the Roth conversions and we'll look at a 401k Roth strategy here. We'll kind of show you a diagram and then we'll also talk about withdrawal strategies and give you an example. A lot of this we're going to talk about more is a pre-planning focus on how you can get more money into a Roth IRA uh, through your 401k. But again, if you've built up money already and you've got it in your 401k or IRA and you want to look at Roth conversions, give us a call. We can go through that and give you the pros and cons, the break-even analysis and things of that nature as well. But let's talk about uh, those contributions. You may not be able to make a Roth contribution, depending upon um, you know if you're if you're married or single and how much you make uh, for a joint. It kind of cuts off around the two hundred twenty thousand dollar level for individual around the one hundred fifty thousand dollar level. It kind of graduates in there. But if you make too much money, you may not be able to make a Roth contribution. And even if you could, those Roth contributions are six thousand five hundred for twenty twenty three, seven thousand for twenty twenty four. Not a high amount. A lot of people want to put more aside into that Roth, that tax-free growth account, um, so they can maximize those benefits for themselves. And then they're beneficiaries as well uh, down the road uh, once they pass away. So if you want to put more than that, one of the ways to doing it is to uh, is to fund your 401k or fund a 
um, a traditional IRA and get that money in there. So going back to those uh, individuals I mentioned, somebody who, let's say, maybe uh, somebody who's single makes $200,000, they can't make a Roth contribution, but they can make an IRA contribution. Um, whether or not they're uh, participants at a 401k plan would help determine if that's uh, tax deductible or not. But in this case, if they want to get that to Roth the IRA, it doesn't matter if it's tax deductible, they're probably not going to take that deduction. So what would happen is, let's say that person for 2024 wants to put in $7,000 into a traditional IRA. They don't get a tax deduction on it right now, so it doesn't really help them on the tax benefits now. But they'll turn around and they will actually convert that over from that traditional IRA over to a Roth IRA. And now that money is going to stay in there and grow tax-free as long as they wait for five years and they reach the age 59 and a half um, before they start tapping into that money. Now, again, this is something that can be done right now, but it doesn't mean that the legislation can't change. Another aspect, it used to be that the minimum or excuse me, the maximum you could convert uh, from an existing IRA or 401k was $100,000. That limit went away uh, you know, years back, but who's to say it can't come back? If you wanted to and you could stomach get the tax bill, you can convert a million dollars right now to a Roth IRA. But again, it's going to count as a million dollars of income, so it's going to bump up your tax bracket. But that still may make sense for you when you look at the long-term effects of it. But if we fast forward, they've added a limit. Maybe they bring it back down to 100 or maybe 200000 uh, You may not have that luxury in the future. So again, something to review uh, year by year. But again, this is kind of a, a backdoor uh, strategy. We can uh, use an IRA, make the contribution. Um, into the IRA and then turn around, convert it to Roth IRA. But a bigger option is through a 401k backdoor strategy. Now, I want to preface this, that not every single company we work with has the option to do this, or if they do, uh, their 401k may not be flexible enough to do it uh, in the most favorable uh, method. So what happens is uh, if you are able to get after-tax money into your 401k plan, you can then potentially turn around and convert that to a Roth IRA, or potentially do an in-plan conversion, convert it over to a Roth 401k if you want as well. That's going to depend upon your company plans. And a lot of times they have source hierarchy as far as where those monies come from. And it's not just going to affect the cost basis, but it's also going to affect the earnings. So it could generate a taxable uh, distribution. So we need to go through that on a one-on-one -on -one basis usually. But the maximum contribution across the board for a 401k is going to be $66,000 in uh, uh, 2023, and it's bumped up $3,000 to $69,000 in 2024. And what's going to happen there is, uh, generally speaking, most people think about that 401k classically as to, hey, I'm going to put in, um, you know, let's say, you know, 5, 10, 15 percent of my salary uh, on a tax deferred basis. So I get a tax deduction. So let's assume maybe somebody's making $100,000 and they put in 15 percent. They put in $15,000 into that tax deferred 401k plan. And what happens is they take that deduction. So instead of it looking like they made $100,000 for the year, to the IRS, it looks like they made $85,000. So they potentially pay lower taxes. Now, eventually, they let that sit there and grow over the next you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And when they take that money out, it's going to be taxable at that point in time. And they have no idea what their tax bracket is going to be. The age old philosophy is the assumption that, hey, when I'm working, I'm going to have a higher tax bracket than when I am when I'm retired. Now, you know, a lot of times that still may make sense. Um, but again, the aspect of it is we've got zero control over where taxes are going to be. So even if you make the same amount of money or you make less in retirement than what you do as a working employee, you could still potentially see higher tax brackets just because the tax codes have changed and those have gone up. So again, something to review. And we give you an example of, of, uh, of tax brackets staying the same versus going up versus even going down. What's the best option for you? And a couple slides here uh, coming up. But again, so sixty-six thousand. We'll focus on the 20, 2023 numbers. Um, is that max? Uh, the max for pre-tax contributions twenty-two thousand five hundred, and then depending upon if you've got company match, that goes into the factor as well. So of that sixty-six thousand, you can subtract out those numbers to figure out what you could put in after tax. Then you could also put in after tax instead of pre-tax if you want to. Uh, but I would probably argue if you've got a newer four hundred one k, and most of them uh, have this option of with a Roth four hundred one k option. Instead of putting that uh, pre-tax or instead of putting it straight after tax, you can put that into the Roth 401k as well. But again, give us a call. We can kind of run through these with you one-on-one -on, -one on the pros and cons. Because again, you may you may think, hey, Wesley, I'm going to go ahead and start maxing out this after tax so I can turn around and roll it over. But your plan may not allow it. You may do that and just build up a lot of after tax and not have the ability to roll it over until you officially retire or leave the company. So it's really important to know that. And in some cases, like I said, you can do in-plan conversions. But what happens is they may force you to move those uh, those after-tax dollars over as well. So let me give you an example. 
let's assume maybe over the years you've built up fifty thousand dollars in after-tax contributions. That's usually going to be coded as post eighty-six contributions on your four hundred one k statement, and maybe it's grown to seventy-five thousand. So you've got twenty-five thousand in gains there. If you wanted to do an in-plan conversion, it may be that company says, okay, we'll move the fifty thousand over to the Roth four hundred one k plan, but that twenty-five thousand in gains. Uh, if we're going to convert that, that counts as $25,000 of income for you for the year, and you have to pay tax on that, and that's the only option you have. Whereas if you could do a rollover to an IRA, it's a little bit easier. You could take that $50,000 cost basis out of there, move that to your Roth IRA, and then you could take that $25,000 in gains, move that over to a traditional or rollover IRA, so it stays tax deferred, and you're not paying any taxes whatsoever on that process, unless, again, down the road, you want to convert later. So a lot of different things to kind of look at on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, uh, for your specific company plans. And we'll be happy to go through that with you. I kind of gave an example, but here's here's the breakdown we have here. In this uh, this case, on that $66,000 level, let's pretend that uh, uh, this company gives a little bit of match, not too much, but let's say $2,000. You see on that very top of that first bar chart, um, the person hits their pre-tax contribution limit at $22,500. And keep in mind, if you're over 50, there's catch up of $7,500 you can put in there as well. And so they're able to put in after tax of 41,500. So if you look at that second bar, you'll see this broken up between their contributions on a pre-tax basis, company contributions in the after tax portion. And then they can actually take that after tax potentially if the plan lets, allows them and roll it over to a uh, rollover, uh, excuse me, a Roth, for, excuse me, a Roth IRA. Now, again, it's a kind of, you have to look at it plan by plan. I've got some people that are able to do this on a quarterly basis, some that way till the end of the year. So let's assume this person puts in that 41500 Hopefully the market's gone up a bit. Maybe it's grown to $45,000. Uh, that growth, that $3,500, that, uh, that would be taxed if you took it out. Or uh, what you would do is, in this case, you would roll that over to a rollover IRA so you don't pay taxes on it. Okay. Now, as far as the taxation on withdrawals, again, uh, fast forward. Let's assume you've got that 401k or an IRA. For the most part, you set that up on a tax-deferred basis. That's the original intent or benefit of these things. Uh, they let you uh, let your assets grow uh, more quickly because they're not getting taxed as they grow uh, and they compound. But eventually, you take that out, you're paying taxes on that. Uh, and if you take out uh, an IRA or 401k before age 59 and a half, you're also potentially paying a 10% penalty on that. Um, there are some different rules around that we go through with our retirement planning webinars. But one key one to remember is uh, mostly with 401ks, if you retire the year you turn 55 or later, you can access the funds from that 401k potentially without that 10% penalty. So very important to be aware of that especially if you're talking to an advisor and you're between 55 and six and 59 and a half, and they're telling you to roll everything over to an IRA, they're probably not focused on your best interest. So again, give us a call. We'll be happy to go through your specific situation if you're transitioning. Um, and then as some fast forward, like I said before, uh, the RMD is going to kick in at age 73 or potentially 75 for those of us that are younger. Um, and what's going to happen is that's when the IRS is going to come knock on the door, say you have to start taking this money out and we're going to start, uh, start taxing you on it. So the question becomes, um, do I actually want uh, want that uh, tax deferred and pay taxes at retirement or have my beneficiaries pay taxes when I pass away, if I'm leaving some to them, hopefully? Um, or would I rather get some of that into tax-free growth so it grows tax-free? I don't have to worry about the taxes ever again, um, and it helps me minimize my potential tax bracket. This is where we go through a Roth conversion strategy every year with our clients and prospects, uh, letting them see how this plays out over the course of the next uh, 10, 15, 20 years or so, especially um, let's say somebody retires at 60, 62, uh, they still got another, you know, 10, 12, 13 years ahead of them where they don't have to take withdrawal. So Roth conversions become a very, a very good playing factor in that aspect. And especially under the age 65, so we don't have to worry about uh, Irma, which is going to be potential higher, uh, higher uh, Medicare premiums as well. So again, everybody's uh, going to be different. Uh, there's no one size fits all solution, but it's worth reviewing, obviously. And as far as reviewing, here's a quick example we kind of put together earlier in the year to try and make it uh, simple to see, okay, let's assume I wanted to do a conversion. Um, this is not assuming that we've put in after tax in a 401k. This is saying, hey, I've got, let's say I've got a $500,000 IRA or a $500,000 401k and uh, and I'm retired. I want to, I want to convert $50,000 of it um, so that I can get that into a Roth IRA growing tax-free for the rest of my life or potentially for my beneficiaries. So how do we run our break-even analysis? Now it gets a little more complicated than this, obviously, but this gives you kind of a quick, uh, a quick, uh, you know, uh, one screenshot at it. But let me zoom in here so we can kind of see the numbers a little bit better. But if we look at this person, let's assume uh, on the left-hand side that they've got fifty thousand dollars they want to convert. Their current tax bracket is twenty-four percent tax bracket. Let's keep it safe and assume that their tax bracket at retirement is going to be twenty-four percent as well. 
Uh, let's assume that uh, the capital gains is going to be 15 percent. And uh, the rate of return on this, we're going to say, let's say they're 50 years old, we're going to let that sit in there for 15 years. Um, so what's going to happen is uh, that's going to grow over that 15 year period at 5%, a really simple, um, you know, 5% compounded rate. So nothing fancy. And uh, it's going to cost them $12,000 in taxes because again, that 50,000 at 20, at 24%, so 12,000. So uh, the question is, okay, am, am I better off the next 15 years? Assume we get that 5% growth rate, which again, is an assumption, could be higher, could be lower. Um, is it better to do this Roth conversion or is it better to keep it in the IRA or 401k and then take the money out later? So zooming back in, looking at these uh, options, if we look at that, um, uh, the Roth option where if we were to simply convert that, and I'm assuming you're paying the taxes out of pocket in this situation. And uh, over time, that Roth is going to grow over the next 15 years to 103,000, just, just shy of $104,000. Now that IRA, if we're looking at taking distributions of it on a 24% uh, basis, You'll see if we're in a 15% a tax bracket, it's going to be 88,000. A 24% tax bracket, 78,000. A 30% tax bracket, 72,000. So all lower than 103,000. However, let's factor back in that we took that $12,000 out to pay taxes or out of pocket. So let's assume that, hey, that full amount was uh, was growing at that 5% rate. So in this case, if, uh, if your tax bracket dropped to 15%, which is a hypothetical tax bracket, um, you would actually be better off by not converting in this situation. You see that's 110,000 versus the 104. But if you were in the same tax bracket or higher tax bracket, it becomes uh, a pretty clear that it makes more money in that Roth uh, conversion than what it does in that IRA. And then you turn around and taking uh, taking distributions from it at that same tax bracket. Again, that's a moving target. We have no idea where tax brackets are going to be. Uh, but again, I think it's a safe assumption if you think your income is going to be roughly the same. Your tax brackets can probably be the same, if not higher. Uh, even if, tax, even if uh, your income goes down, we may see higher tax brackets because uh, it all depends upon how we're going to be uh, funding, you know, all the spending we've been doing over the last uh, last couple of years or so. So, again, something to review and look at on a one on one basis here. And again, it's not just for you. Uh, if you're looking at leaving something to your beneficiaries, uh, focus on that as well, because, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times when we pass away. Our, our kids are you know maybe in their 50s or so at that time, maybe 60s, um, but uh, they may still be working. So they may be forced to take a uh, take a distributions on top of already a high income tax bracket, which could kick that up even more. So they are losing more of your money versus if you had an Roth, uh, a Roth IRA. Um, so to kind of wrap it up again, like I said, a lot of this is on an individual one-on-one -on -one basis. There's not a one size fits all, but uh, in general, a lot of times we want to wait till the end of the year to look at Roth conversions so we can avoid any potential mistakes because there is no recharacterization option anymore. Uh, and the best way to do this is by running that cash flow analysis we've talked about before. Uh, right now, about three fourths of Americans over 50 don't have a written plan. If you can spend about uh, 10 minutes with us, we'll gather some data from you. Uh, you know, items like when you want to retire, uh, what have you saved so far, you know, social security estimates, things like that. What are you looking to spend in retirement? We can run that full cash flow analysis for you. And then we can tie in Roth conversions to show you if that's a strategy that uh, needs to be layered in there to help uh, both you and your legacy as well. And I know I promised that we usually we talk about this in the, in the beginning, but we wanted to kind of save this to, towards the end for those of you that may have wanted to drop off. But um, again, the retirement group, uh, we work with many different Fortune 500 companies. We've been doing it for uh, a little bit over 30 years. Um, and for a lot of those companies, uh, our advisors, myself included, have a deep understanding of some of the specific benefits plans. So should you have questions, detailed questions around your benefits plans, whether it be the pension plan, the 401k, uh, health care, retiree, medical benefits, um, uh, the life insurance uh, continuation benefits, things like that, we can go through all that information with you. We do have offices throughout the country, so rest sure we can probably sit down with you face to face. But honestly, uh, you know, post pandemic, this day and age, it's very easy to have web meetings, phone calls, emails, whatever your preferred communication is. Just let us know. And I just talked about that cash flow analysis. That's something you need to take us up on if you haven't done so before, or it's been over a year or two since you've done one. We should probably update it. But that's a complimentary, uh, detailed review of your specific plan and uh, your your goals to retirement, so we can help you determine if you're on the right path. Uh, should you adjust your savings? Uh, could you retire earlier or do you need to work longer? We're not going to shy away from telling you that. So we'll get into all that information with you as well. But again, if you have any detailed questions, you can reach us at 800-900-5867. Also info at the retirementgroup.com. I'll leave a couple of these QR codes up here to see if uh, Samantha's got any questions for us. But uh, one is to get into schedule an appointment with myself or one of the other uh, retirement group advisors. Uh, you can get into our calendars and set an appointment up with us. Uh, or again, you can email us for that. And there's one for our LinkedIn page. You can get into our LinkedIn page to get updates on uh, other webinars coming out. If you want to get information on your specific company plans, we can get that over to you as well. 
So I want to thank everybody for uh, spending a little bit of time. But uh, Samantha, do we have any questions come through before we wrap this up? Hey, Wes. Uh, yes, let's answer just a couple questions. Um, this first one, which rules apply to inherited Roth IRAs after the SECURE Act? Okay. The, uh, I mean, honestly, the uh, the SECURE Act uh, changed a lot of different rules, uh, some for the better and some for the worse. And uh, the inherited IRAs is kind of for the worse for non-spouse beneficiaries or non-eligible uh, uh, dependents. Um, so what happens is the Roth IRA is going to be very similar to what the traditional IRA is going to be. It used to be uh, you still have the situation, let's say if you pass away, you pass on to your spouse, he or she can just move it over to their IRA uh, or Roth IRA. So no real changes there. Um, if you got a minor child or a uh, somebody who's uh, um, uh, disabled or maybe a, uh, a brother or sister you're leaving it to that's, uh, that's close to your age, less than 10 years younger, uh, they too can potentially stretch that out over their lifetime. So they're not having to take that out immediately. But for most part, if you're passing on to a child, for instance, who's, you know, in their working years, it used to be they could stretch those out over their life expectancy, but now it's a 10-year rule. Uh, so whether it's the IRA or the Roth IRA, either way, they have to get that out within 10 years. They can take it out, you know, year by year, or they can take it all out at the very end or whenever they need to. It's up to them. Uh, the good news is, again, that Roth IRA, it's not going to be taxable uh, like an IRA would. But again, that goes back to that point I mentioned before. If I could build up my assets and instead of, let's say, leaving a million dollars to one of my kids who's working in, in a high tax bracket, uh, maybe if I could leave them, you know, half a million in the IRA and half a million in a Roth IRA, then that's going to be a lot better for them because it's going to lower their tax bracket as well. Uh, not just mine, but lower theirs if my true goal is legacy planning in that case. All righty. Thank you. Uh, number two, can recipients of both IRAs postpone taking distributions? Oh, oh for those, you mean both IRAs, like a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA? I'm assuming that's what this person Okay. Is. Yeah. So uh, in that same kind of case I just mentioned, um, yes and no. For a spousal benefit, uh, then uh, what's going to happen is uh, they can defer taking that. Now, if the if the individual is already taking RMDs, they have to continue those. So let's assume, um, let's hope everybody that passed away is, is past the RMD age and they're past 73 or more. Um, so let's pretend maybe uh, somebody dies at 80 years old. They were already taking RMDs. Those have to continue. So those RMDs keep coming out. Um, and, uh, and versus if they you know, passed away at 65, they weren't an RMD age, then that spouse can move it over to his or hers and defer taking those out until their own RMD age would be. Now, again, in the other situation, if it's a non-spouse beneficiary, it goes under that 10 year rule. Um, uh, again, if they were taking the, uh, the RMD already, they have to at least take those out. So in that case, let's say that, uh, let's say somebody dies at, uh, at, at 80 and they give it to their 50 year old, uh, son. Um, they have the 10 year rule and they have the RMD rule. So they have to get the entire account out within 10 years, but they also still have to take out, you know, the annual distributions that, uh, the individual is taking before. So it gets a little complicated. So again, that's where it comes into, give us a call and kind of pre-planning a lot of this. Cause, uh, again, if you're forced to take money out, it's better to have tax-free money than taxable money in some cases. That's right. Alrighty. Um, just two more. The third one here, you stated that I must pay taxes right away when I convert to a Roth. What is the break even point? Uh, yeah, so it's it's going to depend again, uh, whenever you do a com Roth conversion, uh, in that example we gave you that 50,000, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I'm going to move this from a an IRA or 401k over to a Roth IRA. And that becomes a taxable event in that year. Uh, so whether you do it in January or December 31st, it's going to be that same year. And you have to pay taxes on it when you file your income taxes. So there's really no deferring that um, in that case. Now, the break even at all is going to depend upon what your tax bracket is going to be. I gave an example of that, you know, a, a safe 5% rate of return. If you have a 5% rate of return, uh, depending upon your tax bracket, it, it may take seven years to kind of break even or recoup those taxes you potentially paid. Uh, if you're in a higher tax bracket, it may take eight or nine years because you've got more taxes to recoup. Um, if you got a six or seven percent rate of return, uh, it, it may only take, you know, uh, five years to recoup that. So it all depends upon each individual. Uh, and again, that's why we like to run these scenarios kind of one on one so we can see uh, what your specific situation is. But for the most part, I mean, a lot of this is going to be long term planning. Let's let's hope that we're around for 15, 20, 30 years or so. Um, so even if you're break even, you might say, gosh, we're break even seven years. Uh, it still means that after that seven years, you're getting tax-free growth. So it still is beneficial. It's just a matter of how much do you want to pay uh, now versus later. All righty, Wesley. Thank you. Just one more. Okay. Um, how would I go about making sure my kids inherit a tax-free asset? Okay. C kind of what we were talking about before. I mean, the you know, if you've got an IRA, 
And uh, I do this with a lot of clients right now. Um, let's say they've got, they've built up most of their assets in IRAs because a lot of 401ks we work, a lot of the companies we work with have 401ks in pension plans. So somebody may have 90% of their assets in tax deferred vehicles. And what's going to happen is uh, whether they need that money or not, eventually they have to start taking those required distributions at 73 and that money has to come out. And in some cases they may not need that much money. So we can look at converting some of that to a Roth IRA to minimize the amount they're forced to take out in the future which gives them more planning capabilities to say, hey, I want a lower RMD. If I need extra money, I'll take it from my Roth so I'm not paying taxes on it. Uh, but that's also the same situation where they say, okay, I want to make sure I leave you know, $500,000 to my kids or I want to leave X, Y, Z or I just want to make sure I give it as much as I can to them tax-free. That's where those Roth conversions come into play as well. And again, it's really kind of a year-by-year, -year, case case-by-case situation to look at. I've had clients where you know we've... Uh, yeah, you know, we've we try to keep them the twelve percent tax bracket. We've converted, you know, maybe twenty twenty five thousand a year. I've had others that converted, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand. Uh, others where we've done a big conversion one year and then reduced it or didn't do it the next year because we're looking at Irma uh, Irma situations for Medicare. So there's a lot of complicated things that kind of go into this versus just saying, hey, I want to convert it. So you need to give us a call before you make any mistakes because it could be a higher tax situation than you think. But to answer the question. Converting to a Roth IRA or getting that money into a Roth IRA is going to be really the only tax-free uh, way to get that money over to them uh, as well. All right, uh, Wesley, that was all of the questions we had for today. Do you have anything else to add before we go? You no, know, just to kind of reiterate what you said at the beginning, I believe uh, this is more generic talking to a lot of people, but we do work with a lot of individual specific companies. So we know those plans inside and out. Uh, however, that does not mean we're endorsed by your company. Um, that we're employed by them. But should you have any questions uh, besides the Roth IRA uh, conversions and how to do this, uh, give us a call. We can dig into any question you have, and especially that cash flow analysis we talked about and any retirement planning, uh, planning needs you may have. But uh, again, we want to thank everybody for joining us and we hope you have a great day. And again, it's 1-800-900-5867. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Wesley. Mm -hmm.